One is, I think I, I know, I've heard it before, which is uh, when you look at a, a linear static analysis, when do you decide that it needs to be nonlinear? Uh, well, the surest way is to run it nonlinear and then see if you get different answers. Um, <laughs> um, depending on what you're looking at, there's a number of things. Um, something I look at for nonlinear analysis to know whether I need to do it is I just look at general magnitude of deflections and general magnitudes of things. Um, if I have a beam that's 10 inches long, I generally want, or a plate or a something, I generally want my deflections to be less than 10% of the span. So if I've got a beam 10 feet long, I can generally get away with a linear analysis as long as the deflection stays less than a foot. Um, unless you've got some of the odd situations like I'd mentioned. Um, in the same way with a plate. If I've got a plate that covers four feet and it's half an inch thick, there's a 10 to 1 rule. Span to thickness is generally going to keep you in the linear statics and small displacement world. Um, some indications where you need to go to a large deflection are things like that. The other thing, of course, is if you're looking at stresses and the stresses are pushing up well past yield, you know that if your material is going to yield or it's going to fail, <clears throat> you definitely have to go to a nonlinear analysis. So yielding and failure is a, is a key indicator for nonlinear analysis. Um, contact and boundary conditions are a, are a key indicator. Um, and what I'll call large deflection and large rotation effects where something deflects enough that the forces aren't acting in the right direction anymore. Um, something to consider is uh, something that's underwater that has a hydrostatic load on it. If something underwater rolls significantly underwater, it becomes nonlinear if that normal direction changes enough that you have to that it's going to push it in a different direction. So there's a lot of linear, a lot of guesses like that at how like I said the surest way is to run it linear, run it nonlinear, and see if there's any difference. Um, I've a couple times I've done that and found no difference and said, well, why did I waste all my time doing a nonlinear analysis then? 